Welcome back to the final installment of our mini-series on the Lost Pettigrew Plantations. We're here near the site of the Magnolia Plantation House, which passed to William Pettigrew in 1848. Initially, William did not take issue with the Collins family, who were his distant neighbors at Somerset Place. In the spring of 1845, he courted Josiah III's youngest sister, Alethea, and planned to propose, but she rejected him by relating a message through her brother. William later wrote of this incident that, I then turned my back, forever, on the bright dreams of my youth, and he remained a lifelong bachelor. From this point on, William harbored a deep animosity toward the Collinses that he broke only in times of mourning. He frequently wrote of his quarrels with Josiah and disparaged him behind his back. Unlike Josiah, William also disparaged the use of white hired overseers and instead relied on enslaved overseers to manage his plantations, including Henry at Magnolia. Henry supervised daily operations, especially when William traveled during the summer months. Through letters dictated to a local farmer, Henry and his fellow overseer Moses at Belgrade communicated with William during his travels and kept him updated about the plantations. A selection of their correspondence is linked in the video description below. During this time, William enslaved approximately 40 men, women, and children at Magnolia, some of whom are listed in this document from 1853. A few years later, William prepared this map of the plantation, showing the arrangement of the built environment, including the domestic dependencies, overseer's house, slave dwellings, and agricultural buildings. But the Civil War fundamentally changed the future of the plantation's residents. With the threat of Union occupation, William had Confederate cavalry capture the enslaved community at Magnolia and forcibly relocate them to a new farm in Chatham County. From the interior of the state, he leased out most enslaved persons to other enslavers. With the end of the war came emancipation, and William unsuccessfully tried to entice the formerly enslaved people to work for him as day laborers. As a result, he ended his farming career and became an Episcopal minister in 1869. It appears that he transferred responsibility for Magnolia to his family, including his nephew, Charles Pettigrew Jr., but they failed to revive the plantation without enslaved labor and lost ownership in 1885. At the same time, William Pettigrew served at the Chapel of the Good Shepherd in Ridgeway, North Carolina, seen here, until his death in 1900. In the early 20th century, the Pittsburgh Land and Lumber Company owned large land holdings at Magnolia. However, the company lost the property to foreclosure in 1914, and it was acquired by the Commerce Guardian Trust and Savings Bank of Toledo, Ohio which employed a local family to manage it. Two decades later, the Federal Emergency Relief Administration bought 1,400 acres of Magnolia for a resettlement program that was ultimately combined with Bonarva and Somerset Place to become Scuppernog Farms. The Magnolia Plantation House was restored, and by 1939, the WPA Guide to North Carolina documented that it serves as the residence of the farm superintendent, T.W. Armstrong. Several farms, averaging 118 acres each, are occupied. The administration has provided homes by remodeling some that were already on the property and constructing several new houses costing less than $1,000 each. With the end of Scuppernog Farms in 1945, the land that was once part of Magnolia Plantation was divided and auctioned off. The house and its adjacent domestic dependency buildings were used for storage and fell into disrepair. Unfortunately, the home burned down in 1977. Today, nothing remains of the plantation's built environment, 
and the property is privately owned. We hope you enjoyed these short glimpses into the Lost Pettigrew Plantations. And on our next video, we'll start a brand new series. So be sure to click that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and join us again here on YouTube. Thanks!